Hi, so we're going to just start with making a basic eco brick. I'm not going to move my camera again, so I'm going to stick my head down like that, just go high. And uh, this is the materials that you'll need to start. So a tray of um, exterior cement powder mixed up to a, a slurry, like um, a double cream consistency. Strips of rags, you can use any old rags, but um, ideally, if you've got any old scrim, which has got a bit of an open weave to it, that's even better, like a, a builder or window scrim. Um, cut some strips of wire ready. This is chicken wire, but you can use, um, well, you can use broader wire, you can use a, a nice aluminium soft craft wire, which would be easier to manipulate some wire to tie bits together, secure bits together, some brushes to smooth down um, the surface of the cement and the rags as you go along and something decent to cut your wire with. Having said that, secateurs or pliers will do. Preferably some gloves to protect your hands. These were very cheap from Amazon. They're what they call cut resistant gloves. I think they're about 59p a pair. Um, a mask for mixing dry, from dry powder. An eco brick. And probably the easiest thing to do is look up eco bricks online, make an eco brick. But basically loads of chopped up, un, um, unrecy non-recyclable plastic and then ram it in with something at that end and then just ram it down as hard as you can to ideally get a nice firm block or brick and then what I've made from my eco bricks and you'll have seen this before is this garden pod so we're just going to look at a pod shape for this session and um, you know once you've established that or you may just you know go outside the box and make something different anyway straight off the bat once you've got the basics of going around the eco brick, then you can expand on that. So this was made from an ordinary um, water, just a, a small water bottle size. And this one was made from a medicine bottle. And, and then I just sort of elaborated on it in terms of the materials. Actually, that was based on a, a Greek fire bomb or grenade, um, ancient Greece. So they're very beautiful, but obviously, um, a lethal purpose. Your eco bricks can be all sorts of sizes. I've got massive ones. Anything I can find on the side of the road, and just fill it with with rubbish. So, um, so going back to this. So, if you have some wire cut ready and wrap it round, and I'll just demonstrate that first of all. I've got one piece on there, and this does cut your hands, but I, I'm not very good at wearing gloves. So, just be careful. And then these little bits that stick out, you can use those to, to just grasp an adjacent piece, fold it round. I'm doing this very quickly. Um, I mean, that's holding on to itself, really. Um, if you don't feel it's secure enough, you can wrap some wire around it and tie it and then continue. And as you put, I put I'd say put a minimum of two layers of wire on the bottle and then as you as you start to move around the shape you can just squeeze the wire and manipulate it to the basic shape that you want so i've already got like a poddy like thing going on already and then coming up the other end And squeeze it down at this stage once I've got this basic shape with the first layer I'll probably I'd probably wire it up just tie some wire or um, waterproof string around it if it's meant for outdoors I'm going to talk to you about a few other details about materials in a minute but once I've got going with getting the rag on here which is pretty tricky and messy so that's that so ideally another layer of um, of wire maybe a third one in the middle and you just start building the shape out so here's one I made earlier, never completed, and I just like the way instead of folding it in, I liked, let's see if I can get it all in the camera, 
I like to leave that end so what I may do is just continue the the rags around there and then perhaps go in there with some cement and make like a little a well in there and then and then just have it as like a little sort of secret um, bit to discover inside gold smolty something like that mirror that'd be nice or it could go that way it could be like an insect font in the garden shove a rod up through it anyway that's that's going a bit too far forward okay so what I'm going to do now is just um, I think I'll put another piece of wire on that so just clearing the decks a bit I think I'll just go through cutting the wire a lot of this stuff once you've got the once you've got the basic idea you'll find your own way um, it's simple it's prickly and it can hurt your hands but once you get into it So I'm just cutting on the narrower, not the twisted bits of the wire. It's just easier to cut. Even a good strong pair of kitchen scissors will do it if you want to sacrifice them. This is handy because I can get the points through the holes. So I'm going to wrap another bit round, round the middle of this. And then you can see it starting to fatten out. So just get it to just get it to the, the kind of basic shape that you would like so if i was making this into a pod i'd probably go at least another layer around and then really start squeezing these ends in fattening this out i'm going to tie this down as well now i think so you can grab some bits go through the mesh do it that way or go right round. probably the mesh is best um so it's wonderful other people as you will know by now are making these including Rachel and her mum and um, Sarah and uh, Recycle Me Mosaics um, they're having a go so they probably found their own ways with it and this is just taking you through those first stages and you can have a play I reckon for the first one Perhaps might be better off starting with something this sort of size. It doesn't have to be a completely cylindrical pod. It could be more kind of a flatter ovoid. I mean, something like that. You could, you could even, if you just went really fat there, you could stand it up. So you can take it all sorts of places. So that's just popping that wire in there. All this is uh, scrap material, and I love that. I love that. It's free. And of course, it's uh, eminently uh, <laughs> more environmentally friendly, although everything is uh, not in the end. So the idea for me with these is to make them really sturdy, really waterproof. So when you pack the bottle, make sure everything's dry and then you will be containing it, it within the, the, the mesh and, and the cement and rags. Um, and let that dry off and then you have a, a, a fabulous sort of waterproof substrate for a garden piece but they could be you could do something for indoors you could use a pre-mixed um, adhesive cement based adhesive and stick your rags in that but obviously it wouldn't last very long outside but it would be quicker and easier to do you don't even need to use the mesh you could just keep building up rags you know whatever you want wrap plastic around it but this is probably the easiest way to begin so just to reiterate we're taking the the basic eco brick method which um they are a kind of a sustainable environmentally friendly way of making bricks and and using them in architecture easy to look up online and then the addition is wrapping the wire around or something around it to build out build it out into the sculptural shape that you want Right now we're on to the, um, the tricky bit where it slips and slops all over the place. So I think um, the best thing to do is get one layer of rags on either, either over the whole piece, either wrap them round and hope they stay or wrap them round and tie them with wire. Or even if you just did one end, let it dry, and then did the other end and it looked like goodness knows what, like this one. 
and that is a bit more refined I did go over it a bit later on and then once you've got that solid dry um, skin it's so much easier to continue to go over it or you could even use and I'll demonstrate this in a bit you could even use um, a thick mixture of um, a thin set or um, cement based adhesive and finish the shape with that right so here we go um, I've got a, a spare rag here just to wipe my fingers when they get too clagged up um, I'm very naughty about not wearing gloves but I, re I just like to feel what I'm doing hence my nails and hands are wrecked so again so a nice sort of double cream maybe a bit thicker and it really depends on the on the cement based adhesive you're using so today I'm using bow and it's got like rubber particles in it to make it very very flexible so it's got a bit of a strange jelly like consistency so I'd say something that was more cement like is probably easier to work with I like using this because it's just it's just so waterproof and I of course I use it for other projects um, but there are uh, other adhesives I like using I like using eco gel um, eco gel made by Keracol and that's more environmentally friendly but I did find that it didn't like um, sticking to my slate and my substrates very well. But it likes sticking to itself and it would make a good body for mosaicing on for glass, etc. Right, so first one on. And then that just wants to flop off all over the place. So you can risk a longer piece that you can wrap right round straight off the bat. So it kind of holds itself on there. And... Um, well, when we do the um, the make along, which is going to be a bit of a jamming session, I'm hoping other people have come forward that have been doing it longer than I have. Um, you know, or I should say, not longer than I have, but they've done, made more than I have because the day job kind of gets in the way. Um, and and they will have other tips to share. So there we are. Just what's this making me think of? Beef Wellington or something? So course you get this kind of thing where it's sort of hanging down so you could either just leave it like that do one side and let it set and then you can trim it once it's crispy and dry might be the easiest way to go then do the other side leave it to dry and then you've got something that will cling to further layers or further layers will cling to much more easily so So for the sake of the for the sake of the demo I'm gonna pop a couple of bits of wire around that. God it's incredibly hard trying to talk, watch the camera and do what you're trying to do. Okay, that's another bit. So you could just I've been a bit mean with the wire here, you could just keep wrapping that round until that material's nice and tight and can and carry on. I'm going to fold this over now and we'll just pretend I've got more wire on there. So imagine that's wired up more stably. Uh, this, 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 this stage is, is horrible, it's horrible. I'm a very impatient person so I was just left to it. I, I just keep wiring it and whacking it on and then put it to one side, let it dry. And as I say, it looked like, you know, goodness knows what, but you can refine it later on so so that's it basically put it on some plastic bit of old plastic to let it dry and then the plastic will just peel away um, without damaging the work you can go that way if you want to take it over the ends it's all flopping in my lap now so I'm just going to put that to one side and I will let that one dry actually and work on it again I might play with it a bit more in a minute when the camera's off. I've got all this stuff left over. Oh. Okay. So with this, I'm just going to wet this down. And the stuff that I'm going to wet it down with is actually, it comes with all exterior um, tile adhesives. Is is a primer. Um so this is this is I this is a bowel primer. It's called an all-in-one, and I've just mixed it one to four with water. So one part bowel, um, three parts um, three parts water, 
and it just like anything you do like this like cementing a wall or whatever if you just damp it down it just helps any further layers of cement to cling and then this is a very thick mix i like to almost get it to a modeling paste you can do it with all adhesives this is very amenable as i say because it's got the rubber bits in it and just squidge it on however you know whatever works for you and you could just squidge that to shape so if i want to bring this out to a more of you know a fuller shape i could use that it's probably a bit of a waste of adhesive you'd be better off doing that with the cheap material um but it's certainly um brilliant for just smoothing it down to give yourself an easier surface to decorate on of course it can be sanded down later so i hope you can hope you can see that that's quite satisfying actually it's more satisfying than putting the rags on and then with um something like this these small bottles i mean even an old um silicone tube could make an eco brick but something like this these little bottles you could in theory just sand it down to give it a tooth wrap a bit of rag around it let it dry and then and then build on that and, and you know fill it with fill it with rubbish i mean there's all sorts of horrible i mean look at this you know it's just all these things that aren't recyclable um so they're all going to go in something shortly okay so um i think that's it look forward to seeing at you seeing you at the um, make along Hi again, I fancy a bit of an outtake. Now I'm relaxed, I've put everything away apart from what I was working on and there's a lot to be said from walk, for walking away and going back to something when the uh, adhesive starts to cure, particularly if it's a flexible one and any of the admixes that you use will, will make your adhesive more flexible anyway because it's kind of like a polymer or whoa, some plasticizer. Anyway, down we go. So this is going back to this one that I started to put a layer of the thick stuff on to tidy up the surface. So I, I got a um, um, smoother surface to work on later on. It'll be easier than trying to follow the lumps and bumps unless I want to. I suppose it doesn't even have to be mosaic, but anyway. So um, what I did was I spread, it could be water, but I spread some of the this uh, Admix on or primer and then before it's um, really, really dry, just probably better to use a glove or a tool, but I like mud pies. Just smoothing it down and then just seeing with my fingers, if you like, as well as, as, well as my eyes. But going back to this one, um, he started to the adhesive started to thicken up just a tiny bit. It's still pretty floppy and fragile, but I've got some stuff left over. I've got some rag left over. So what I'm going to do now is a bodget and scarper. Rip up a large bit. I want to use this stuff up. So I'm just going to squeeze it right in there. It is starting to thicken up now, actually. As I say, it's starting to cure off but then that's um, probably slightly easier to work with. In terms of um, waterproofing, I'm squeezing that to get it all through the, through the material, or you could have perhaps dampened the material first, that might help. So this is the kind of um, dodge it type tip so that's a nice nice fat bit of material now this suits me down to the ground just hurrying things along and I'll pop that on there schedule some more adhesive on where it's a bit thin Ooh. take it around let it grab itself so I say underneath, although it wasn't um, stiff cured, it had gone a bit tackier. Even that with, with the wet rag underneath, it's slightly easier to work on. Now, I don't particularly like that shape. I mean, it is poddy. It looks like um, 
leaf cutter bee pod or uh, well any some kind of creature pod so yeah I guess if that's if that's what I was doing but I I think I might I might just once it's dry I might put another piece of mesh on here fatten it out and then I recommend about at least three layers of rag just get a nice thick tough skin Turn the camera off and all. Set my hands are now filthy. Okay, see you folks.